Voy a presentarles el próximo panel. Preservando la Internet para las futuras generaciones a cargo de Lynn Sandamur. Lynn Sandamur, quien es presidente y CEO de la Internet Society. Se unió a ISOC en 1998 como directora ejecutiva de su división para Europa, Medio Oriente y África y fue responsable de la expansión internacional de la institución. En 1999 se convirtió en directora ejecutiva y CEO de ISOC, cargo que mantuvo hasta su nombramiento como presidente en CEO en marzo del 2001. Reparte su tiempo entre las oficinas de ISOC en Reston, Virginia y Ginebra, Suiza. Santa Moore posee vasta experiencia en tecnologías de la información globales y de comercio internacional. Su experiencia incluye puestos del más alto nivel en áreas de ventas y marketing internacional, planificación estratégica, gestión de socios y manufactura. También tiene gran experiencia en reestructuración corporativa y administración de compañías startup. Santa Moore ha trabajado fundamentalmente en el Reino Unido, Francia y Suiza, pero también ha pasado largos periodos en otros países europeos. Esta es su segunda vez en Uruguay y le damos la bienvenida a Lynn Santa Moore. Thank you and good afternoon and I think I'm probably between the coffee break as well, so I'll try and keep this um, timely. So it's a pleasure to join you here today and a very big pleasure to be part of uh, LACNIC's 10th anniversary celebration. Um, specifically, I'd like to congratulate LACNIC for a very impressive set of achievements and impacts over its first decade. As you know, the regional internet registries play a central role in the internet ecosystem, as do, of course, many others. But the internet ecosystem is a term we use to describe the organizations and communities that guide the operation and development of the technologies and infrastructure that make up the global internet. Importantly, and Paul mentioned some of this in the previous panel, the term internet ecosystem also recognizes that the rapid and continued development of the internet is attributed, as in any healthy ecosystem, to a number of factors. The involvement of a broad range of players, processes that are open, transparent, collaborative, thereby facilitating participation and evolution and dispersed engagement, ownership, and control. The fact that this is an ecosystem is why it is important that we all work together collectively to nurture and preserve it. LACNIC's played a significant role, not only in this region, but also on the global stage by actively promoting and enriching the multi-stakeholder internet governance model that is so critical to the future of the internet. This mutual cooperation is essential to ensure the continuation of the Internet as an engine for innovation, human empowerment, social development, and economic growth. LACNIC, and in particular its CEO, Raul Echeverria, has been a tireless advocate for the open, transparent, and inclusive approach to Internet governance. Another important contribution from LACNIC is the commitment to the Internet community building which has led to the creation of multiple diverse fora in this region. Beyond their core work as an internet registry, LACNIC's been active in building relationships and co cooperating with other organizations to bring together ideas and perspectives. And we're very happy that the Internet Society's Regional Bureau for Latin America and the Caribbean is housed alongside LACNIC here in Montevideo and our Regional Bureau Director, Sebastian Belagamba of which no one could possibly be his boss, is here today with his whole team. So LACNIC also incubated our local chapter here in Uruguay, and we're thankful for their continuing support and leadership. LACNIC's played a critical role in technical capacity building in the region. And over the years, they've expanded regional capabilities by hosting and sponsoring a broad range of forums, training activities, and collaborative projects to strengthen the internet in the region and beyond. One very recent example is a tutorial on the Internet Engineering Task Force, which was held here yesterday. Steve Crocker spoke earlier today about the early days of the IETF, and I just want to note that it is still very, very central to the development of the Internet. The IETF is a premier Internet standards development body 
with approximately 120 working groups active, very active, at any point in time. It continues to develop, and while international participation has picked up very considerably over the last 10 years or so, notably from Asia, we all need to do more to encourage greater participation, particularly from Latin America. And there are a relatively small number of participants from Latin America, but they're having a very, very big impact. So if there is anything we can do to help that participation, please don't hesitate to contact myself or, or Sebastian. But finally, I'd like to take a moment to just recognize the leadership of Raul, who was the founding CEO of LACNIC, continues in this role today. I've had the pleasure of working with Raul for more than a decade now, nearly 14 years, in fact. Um, and he served as chair of the Internet Society Board of Trustees from 2009 to 2012. He was indeed the first chair from Latin America, and he still serves on our board. There's a quote from Raul which I like, which I believe exemplifies his style of leadership, and it's this. What we learn time and again is that the best and most lasting solutions are the ones that we arrive at through cooperation and mutual respect that are rooted in principle and that open the door to innovation. That quote not only embodies the excellent work of LACNIC, it also underlies the development model for the internet itself. And on behalf of the Internet Society and our Board of Trustees, I'd like to congratulate Raul, the LACNIC Board, and the LACNIC staff on this important milestone and for your outstanding contributions to the advancement of the internet in this region and around the globe. We are very, very happy to be able to work so closely with all of you. So now, moving to the main theme of my remarks today, just preserving the internet for future generations. As earlier speeches today have showed, the past 10 years has been a very exciting and a very challenging period. The internet's evolved in ways no one could ever have imagined. It has become indispensable, enabling unprecedented levels of interaction, engagement, participation, and influence. More than two billion people online today are linked instantaneously to news, information, and content, largely of their choosing. And as global citizens, they can instantly connect to groups of people and communities involved in issues and happenings at local, national, and international levels. Latin America is one of the fastest growing regions in the world for internet usage. And I'm sure that comes as no surprise to all of you here. The Internet Society recently conducted a statistically valid global study with nearly 11,000 internet users in 20 countries. And in most areas, Latin America was equal to or slightly ahead of the global average. With one exception, social media, where 69% of the individuals in Latin America use social media at least once a day, and that was significantly higher than the global number of 60%. So according to research from ConScore, Latin America leads the world as the most socially engaged region. The research, which was conducted earlier this year, found that 127 million Latin Americans, age 15 and older, and I would suggest that that already misses a significant piece of the population, um, uh, visited a social networking destination with the average visitor spending seven and a half hours a month. Facebook is by far the most popular social network in America, and that, sorry, in Latin America, and that accounts for one of every four minutes spent online. So we can only begin to imagine the impact of the internet in the next decade with the accelerating growth of connectivity and specifically in mobile devices. According to the OECD, as of December 2011, the estimated number of wireless broadband connections was more than double that of fixed broadband subscriptions nearly 700 million compared to 300 million. As more internet users come online, we will see the center of the internet shifting to the developing world. Developing countries and emerging economies are at the forefront of internet growth, and many are experiencing some of the fastest rates of GDP growth in the world, also making them compelling markets and sources for internet-enabled services and trade. Because the internet facilitates innovation without permission, internet users throughout the world are more and more creators rather than consumers, rapidly developing innovations, efficiencies, and opportunities that will help fuel the next wave of internet growth, investment, and prosperity. This evolution is reinforced by McKinsey, 
reported that over 150,000 internet-related businesses start up each year in emerging and developing countries alone. One interesting example is India's version of Amazon.com. There are many other um, examples here uh, earlier today in presentations from Mercado Lieb, or even the example of the doctor I sat next to on my flight here yesterday, who's from Montevideo, and he's begun work on a project to revolutionize medical publishing. Following, I might add, unbeknownst to him, many of the principles we all espouse with respect to transparency, access, and openness. Equally importantly is that the stunning impact of the internet in developing and emerging economies is not just a benefit for them, it's a benefit for all of us. The internet becomes increasingly more valuable, more useful, more interesting for all users, the more people, more businesses, more institutions, and more ideas um, that are actually connected to it. So while the social and economic opportunities generated by the internet are extraordinary, it's very easy to take the internet for granted. But we cannot lose sight of, really must not lose sight of, the fact that the primary reason the internet has had such a sweeping impact is because it has been guided by a few simple principles or, char or core characteristics. Specifically, open, freely accessible, and globally interoperable technical standards that are at the heart of the internet. They are the internet's core. Also by an inclusive, transparent, multi-stakeholder governance model, as that delivers the most robust, creative solutions possible. Globally distributed and participatory responsibility for its technical and administrative functions. And an architecture, again, that facilitates permissionless innovation, where the power of creativity and the freedom of choice is placed in the hands of individuals. The pioneers who built and managed the internet in its early days not only worked to develop technical standards and establish the basic functionality of the internet, but they also helped to shape the spirit of the internet based on principles of open sh access, sharing, and choice. You heard from a few of the pioneers here today, Vince Cerf by video, Steve Crocker, and from Latin America, of course, there are pioneers here, such as those who served on LACNIC's first board. Oscar Mesano, Oscar Robles, Hartmut Glazer, Ramon de Becca, Fabio Marino, and Jesus Martinez, and of course, Raul Echeverria, LACNIC's first CEO. There are, of course, many others from Latin America who deserve to be recognized, but this is difficult to do in the time allotted here. So turning to internet governance, the internet works because its governance is open, inclusive, collaborative, and transparent. It allows for all voices, individuals, private sector, and governments. This type of mutual cooperation ensures the stability, security, and availability of the global infrastructure, and has been a key contributor to what can only be described as a breathtaking evolution and expansion of the internet. So as we've just heard, the upcoming World Conference on the International Telecommunications, or WICIT, has brought internet governance issues to the fore and has elevated the conversations on internet governance to entirely new levels and new audiences. And this is precisely why it is imperative now that all of us reinforce the importance of the multi-stakeholder internet governance model. The Internet Society, along with our chapters and members, and many partners in the internet community, have been actively involved in working with all stakeholders in preparation for the wicket. We have been active in raising concerns about unintended consequences of certain proposals to modify the ITRs, and we have been constructive in suggesting alternatives. Some of the proposals at the wicket could have far-reaching unintended consequences. This is not even a matter of intent. It's more about unintended consequences for the Internet, impacting individuals who use the Internet, impacting businesses that rely on global interoperability, and impacting developing market economies whose internet growth is essential to economic and social development. The ITRs were last updated 24 years ago in 1988, and they encompassed high-level principles that enabled exceptional growth for the telecommunications industry and provided countless benefits for people around the world. It is the Internet Society's hope that WICIT will build on what has worked so well in the past and so enable an even more profound and positive impact than that of 1988. 
To that end, we're encouraged by recent remarks by two leaders that the wicked is about promoting greater connectivity and not about regulating the internet. So again, returning to the theme and to close, what can we all do to preserve the internet for future generations? I'd offer three things. Work to ensure the continued support for the broad definition of internet governance that came out of the WISIS effort, World Summit on the Information Society. We must resist efforts to make this only about so-called critical internet resources, naming and numbering, or about any one organization. Internet governance is much more broad about that, and that is, in fact, a global consensus on that definition. Two, uphold the multi-stakeholder collaborative aspects in all we do. This has proven to be very successful. It's given us a rich and robust environment for infrastructure and applications alike. And three, there's an old adage that says that what matters most when purchasing a house is location, location, location. With the internet, the equivalent is participate, participate, participate. This is what matters most. Participate in local and national internet policy discussions. Participate in discussions on intellectual property, privacy, or personal data. Encourage others to participate. Participation is what will ensure the open, global internet will persevere. Every internet organization I know supports and benefits from such participation. And we have all taken steps to minimize barriers to participation. It is incredibly exciting to think about what can happen in the next 10 years as we unleash the creativity of even more internet citizens from across the globe, particularly those from countries or regions that historically have been underrepresented. We have to focus not only on reaching the next billion users, but more importantly, on reaching the last billion users and ensuring they have access to the same opportunities we all enjoy today. As many have said here today, the Internet's at a critical juncture, and we're facing some of the most challenging times in its history. So whatever future political, technological, economic, and social challenges we may face, multi-stakeholder cooperation must be preserved, as well as a broad definition of Internet governance for future generations and for the remaining billions still to come online. We all need to remain vigilant in defending the core characteristics of the Internet, Personally, I also hope we all continue to value and welcome open, constructive discussion and open up even more participation in international forums to multi-stakeholder discussion. Thank you very sincerely for the opportunity to be here with you today and to address you. Thank you.